Well, hello everyone, it's Jordan Power here, and in this podcast, I will be talking about how to deal with intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts are unwanted, involuntary thoughts that can be uncomfortable. There is a big difference in between cherished thoughts and unwanted thoughts. Cherished thoughts are thoughts that you entertain or choose to have, while unwanted thoughts are not cherished since you did not want to have such thoughts. And you obviously did not entertain the thought either. When scripture condemns evil thoughts, that is speaking of cherished thoughts, which are the thoughts that are that you entertain or choose to have. It's not talking about the unwanted involuntary thoughts, which are the ones that are not cherished since they are not entertained. James four, six through seven says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 2 Corinthians 10 5 says, Casting down imaginations on every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If you are dealing with intrusive thoughts, the best thing you can do is to instantly think about positive things let alone things of the Lord, and ignore the intrusive thoughts. If you ignore the intrusive thoughts and think about the positive things or thing or the things of the Lord, then those intrusive thoughts will go away. We should not cherish evil thoughts because it is actually a sin to cherish evil thoughts. For example, if you cherish a lustful thought, then that is committing adultery in your heart. We must remember that God can see our thought life, which means that he can see everything that we think about. Another dangerous thing about cherished evil thoughts is that cherished evil thoughts lead to action. Which is the reason why when a murderer gets arrested for murder, and if it is proven that the person was entertaining the thought of committing such a heinous crime before it was committed, then the murderer gets arrested for premeditated murder. The only thoughts that we should entertain are positive thoughts, let alone thoughts that have to do with the things of the Lord. When you have intrusive thoughts, then you should just ignore them and think about the things of the Lord, or other positive things. Philippians 4, 6-8 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes, passes, passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Family, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. When we ignore intrusive thoughts and entertain the thoughts about the good things, let alone the things of the Lord, then we will be at peace, and our mind will be at peace also. We must remember that intrusive thoughts have no power over us. Verse 8 can also be used when using the sermons in what content we watch. We should stick with wholesome content, let alone biblical content, and avoid evil content, and because content will always have an influence on us no matter what type of content it is. If you're indulging in evil content, then that content is going to have a bad influence on you and will lead you astray. On the other hand, if you're indulging in the positive, let alone biblical content, then that will have a wholesome influence on you, and in the events that the content is biblical, it, it will be an edifying influence. Just like how having Christian friends who truly live for the Lord will also be an edifying influence on you. If you are looking for Christian friends, and if you meet someone who claims to be a Christian, then wait some time for his or her fruit to show, and if that person is truly living for the Lord, then you can go and begin a friendship with him or her. On the other hand, if that person is a fake Christian, then do not begin a friendship with him or her, since bad company corrupts good character. When looking for Christian friends, you should pray to the Lord that you meet fellow brothers or sisters in Christ who you can be friends with. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. 
Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Jesus Christ will give us the strength to overtake any kind of obstacle that comes our way, no matter how hard the obstacle is. If you rely on the strength of God to overcome intrusive thoughts, sin, or untrust the Lord, instead of your own understanding, then you will overtake intrusive thoughts, and your mind will indeed be at peace. Verse 13 does not mean that you will win a game or achieve a selfish goal. 2 Corinthians 5, 16-17 says, Wherefore henceforth know we, we know man after the flesh, yea, so we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. John 8, 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus Christ is the only way, and the truth, and the life. And he sets us free from any kind of bondage we are dealing with. Uh, oh, he can help us overtake intrusive thoughts, and most importantly, he can also help us overcome sin. If there are any sins that you struggle with, then he can help you have victory over those sins. Jesus also gives us victory over the hardships that we deal with in life. Mark 71 through 23 says, For from within, out of the hearts, men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. In these three verses, when it mentions evil thoughts, it is not talking about intrusive thoughts since those ones are unwanted involuntary thoughts. The evil thoughts mentioned in these three verses are talking about cherished evil thoughts, which are the ones that are entertained. If you entertain evil thoughts, so then that will lead to several different sins because sin is progressive and will always get worse over time, if not repented of. Because of this, we should not entertain evil thoughts, and if you are living in sin, then you should repent of your sins, as Romans 6 makes it crystal clear that you cannot continue living in sin and still be saved. If you have not yet truly accepted Jesus, then first here is a warning and then how to be saved. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, as said in Romans 3.23. If you die in your sins, then you will go to hell where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. To be saved, all you need to do is to repent of your sins and believe in Jesus Christ, and works are not needed for salvation, since it's by grace through faith that we are saved, and not by works. As said in Ephesians 2.8 and 9.